Umar radiallahu anhu's khilafa, if you lived in Medina at that time, this was the golden age. Everything the Prophet talked about that would come to pass in terms of good is happening in the khilafa of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. However, Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu knew that his time was coming near. And he had these two du'as that he would make. The most famous one, Oh Allah, grant me martyrdom in your cause and let me die in the city of your Prophet. Hafsa and Abdullah would say to Umar, how are you going to die a shaheed in Medina? Battles don't happen in Medina. He said, if Allah wants it to happen, it's going to happen. He had another dua. He said, Oh Allah, do not let me be killed at the hands of someone who prostrated towards you. He made sujood to you that he would argue against me on the day of judgment with it. Meaning, don't let me be killed by a believer. So subhanAllah, his dua is to be killed by a non-Muslim in Medina as a shaheed. Three things that seem completely impossible. So how does this shahada come about? It starts with a man by the name of Abu Lu'lu'a al-Majusi. Abu Lu'lu'a was a skilled craftsman. He used to make weapons of war. And he works under Mughir ibn Shu'ba radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Now Abu Lu'lu'a complained to Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And Umar radiallahu anhu was a just man. But Abu Lu'lu'a complains that the commission that he's taking from the weapons of war are too much. And I'm working too hard. So Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he takes his complaint, he weighs the evidence on both sides, and Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu comes to the opinion that it was a fair commission that he was taking. So Umar radiallahu anhu tells him that, you know, it's, it's not an unjust salary that he's taking or a portion that he's taking from you. And at the same time, he tells Al-Mughir ibn Shu'ba to be lenient with him, to be just with him. But Abu Lu'lu'a was enraged by just that judgment. So Abu Lu'lu'a, he goes back and he swears to himself that he's going to kill Umar al-Khattab And Umar anhu is walking by him one day in Medina and he's making all of these different types of things and one of the things that he would make was windmills. He would make these spears and he would make all of these different crafts. So Umar anhu walks by and in a nice way, he says to him that I heard that you do these things very well. Can you make me one of these also? And Abu Lu'lu'a says to him, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, I'm going to make one for you that the whole world is going to hear about. SubhanAllah. He's threatening him in a nice way. Umar is not illiterate or naive in this situation. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he walks away and he's laughing as he's walking away and he says, he just promised to kill me. So the Sahaba say to him, well, why don't we apprehend him and why don't we kill him first? He says, Ayuqtalu ala dhan? You want him to be killed over a suspicion? He said, no, absolutely not. That's my hunch from him. That's my sense from him. But it's the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever happens as a result of that. Now, subhanAllah, there are these dreams that then start to happen. Awf ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he says, during the khilaf of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, I saw this rope that was hanging down from the heavens and the people were trying to reach it. So he says, Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu was three times the size of everybody else. So he grabbed onto it easily and he ascended. So I said, how come Umar radiallahu anhu is the only one that can grab the rope and can ascend? And it was responded to me, because he is the Khalifa of Allah on this earth, and he does not fear the blame of a blamer, and he will be killed as a martyr. The second dream is from Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu anhu. What a beautiful dream. He was in Asham and he woke up in the morning and he calls the people and he says, that I saw an interesting dream last night. I saw that I had horses and crops and then they started to disappear. So good things started to disappear. And so he said, I took it and I went to this Jabal, to this mountain. And I saw Rasulullah and Abu Bakr anhu standing in the distance and Umar anhu standing and looking at them. And Rasulullah is telling to Umar, come to me, cross, cross over here. So Abu Musa, he saw that dream and they said, why don't you write a letter to Umar telling him what you saw? And he said, I don't want to be the one to break the news of his death to him. That was actually the year that Umar radiallahu anhu would die. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu would die only a few days after returning from Hajj. And the Sahaba describe Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu raising his hands in Arafah that year, saying, Ya Rabb, I've gotten old and my strength is leaving me when tasharat ummati and the ummah has spread to the world. Take me back to you while you're pleased with me, O oh Allah. Pleased with what I have done with your ummah. He gets back to Medina from Hajj, the 21st of Dhul Hijjah, Yawm al-Jum'ah, 23 years after the Hijrah. 
And Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he stands up and he says, Ayyuha nas, O people, I saw a dream where a rooster came up to me and it pecked me twice. And then the people said to me that you should appoint a Khalifa. So Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, I interpreted this to mean my death, but Allah will not cause his religion or this ummah to be lost. But he said, if I die, then the Khalifa is to be appointed by those whom the Prophet ﷺ was pleased with when he died. Then comes the day of his death. So it is the 23rd of the Hijjah, Salat al-Fajr. And Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu walks in and he's 63 years old, just like the Prophet ﷺ was 63 years old when he died, just like Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was 63 when he died. The most extensive narration is from Amr ibn Maymun radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And he says that on that day, Umar radiallahu anhu came to Salat al-Fajr. And I was standing in the second line and there was no one between he and I except for Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And he said, Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, before he would lead the salah, he would walk between us and he would straighten up our rows. And then Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu went to lead the salah. He says, Allahu Akbar. So Umar radiallahu anhu was leading Salat al-Fajr and I'm praying behind him. And he said he read Surah Yusuf. And he cried a lot as he read Surah Yusuf. SubhanAllah. And then Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu went into Rukur and he went into Sujood. And Abu Lu'lu'a, he had made this dagger that he sharpened from both ends. So he could stab both ways. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu and he poisoned both ends of the dagger and he was hiding it under his cloth, under his cloak and he was praying because even though he wasn't a Muslim, right? It's Fajr, no one can see anybody else. So Abu Lu'lu'a waited for him to go into sujood and as he was in sujood, Abu Lu'lu'a attacked him and he stabbed Umar radiallahu anhu with that dagger up to nine times. Stabbed him in his back, stabbed him in his front, stabbed him from his sides and the worst wound was right in the stomach of Umar radiallahu anhu. So after he, he hit him enough times and Umar radiallahu anhu was, was laid out, then he stabbed him the hardest right in his stomach under his navel. And Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he gasped and he said, Qatalani al-kalb, the dog killed me. He remembered that incident, subhanAllah, from that moment when he walked by him. And he recited, وَكَانَ أَمْرُ اللَّهِ قَدْرًا مَقْدُورًا SubhanAllah, right away Qur'an comes to his mind. And the affair of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was a decree to come true. And the people that were around Umar, some of them started to help him and then some of them went to pursue Abu Lu'lu'a. And Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, what's his concern as he's laying there about to die? He grabs the leg of Abdurrahman ibn Awf radiallahu ta'ala anhu and he says, finish the prayer of Abdurrahman. Abdurrahman ibn Awf, he goes up and he quickly, he reads Surah Al-Kawthar on the second rak'ah and he quickly finishes up the salah. In the meantime, Abu Lu'lu'a, he goes out of the masjid and he's stabbing people on the way. So he kills nine people on that morning and he wounds 13. And just as he's getting through them, eventually the people apprehend him and they throw a cloak on top of him. And as Abu Lu'la re realizes that he's surrounded by others, he takes his own dagger and he stabs himself three times in the chest until he dies. So he commits suicide in the masjid. And so immediately after they finish the salah, they carry Umar bin Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu to the house of Abdullah because Abdullah's house was the closest to the masjid, his own son. And at that point, Umar radiallahu anhu had lost consciousness. And they're trying to revive him. And Abdullah is calling out, Ya Abata, Ya Abata, oh my father, oh my father. They're trying to revive him. But Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu was unconscious for some time. After sunrise, Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu opens his eyes. What's the first thing he asks? He says, Asalla nas Did the people finish their prayer? SubhanAllah. And they said to him, Yes, they finished their salah. He said, Alhamdulillah, because there is no share of Islam for the one that leaves their prayer. And then he tells Abdullah, sit me up. And he says to Abdullah, bring me some water. When he asks them for water, they think that he's going to drink water. Well, what does he start to do? He starts to do wudu. And Umar radiallahu anhu finishes his fajr prayer because he was stabbed and made unconscious in the second Mecca. That's where his heart is. That's where his mind is. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu starts to ask questions. He said, who was the one that killed me? They said, Al-Majusi. It was the Persian, that person that you suspected that day. And he said, Alhamdulillah, the one who killed me is not someone who says, La ilaha illallah. Alhamdulillah. And then Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he asks for some laban, for some milk. 
and they brought him the milk and his wounds was so severe that everything he drank came out of his stomach. So they called for a doctor and the doctor saw the wounds of Umar anhu, tried to patch up, saw what happens when he drinks milk and the way that his body was responding. And he says to him, O oh, commander of the believers, you're not going to make it, you're going to die. So whatever wasiya you have to give, then give it now. What does Umar anhu do? Number one, he calls Abdullah. And he says, Ya Abdullah, I want you to go around and I want you to see who I owe money. And I want you to make sure that you pay off every single one of those debts. And your father doesn't have much. It's not that he had big debts, it's that he had no money. He's the Khalifa of the Muslims, most powerful man in the world. He has no money. He said, so you and the kids take care of it. Then Umar anhu reaffirms the Shura. And he appoints those that will appoint the Khalifa after him. And they are the six people that are remaining from those who were promised paradise, except for one who would have been the seventh. And that was Sa'id ibn Zayd. Why? Because Sa'id ibn Zayd is his brother-in-law. He is his cousin and Umar anhu wants to keep his family away from the Khilafah. He wants to avoid nepotism in any way possible. And then he calls Abdullah and he says to Abdullah that I have one wish. SubhanAllah, his dying wish. He says, go to Aisha radiallahu anha and give my salam to her. But don't tell her that Amir al-Mu'mineen sends salam to you. Tell her that Umar sends salam to you because I'm no longer Amir al-Mu'mineen. I'm no longer the commander of the believers. And ask her, but tell her that it is fully your right to say no to this. Ask her if she would give me permission to be buried in that spot beside the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala. If she says no, that is adl. That's justice. That's her right. Don't pressure her. If she says yes, that's her fadl. That's her virtue. That's her showing kindness towards me. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhumah says, I went to Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha and I found Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha weeping profusely. And subhanAllah, they said Aisha cried more when Umar died than when her own father Abu Bakr died. And they said to her, why? She said, because Umar was the door between us and the fitna. Everyone in Medina is crying right now because they know that Umar radiallahu anhu is dying. So Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma says, Assalamu alaikum ya ummi, peace be unto you, my mother. I have a request from Umar. He sends his salam to you and he asks for you to consider, but without any pressure, it's your right. If he could be buried next to his two companions, buried next to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anha. Aisha radiallahu anha. She says, I always envisioned that that would be my spot that I'd be buried next to my husband and my father. I mean, this is her home. It's literally her room. The Prophet ﷺ and Abu Bakr are buried in her room. But I know the place that Umar anhu had with Rasulullah So she granted it. Abdullah ibn Umar comes back when Umar sees Abdullah. He's laying down, he's barely alive at this point. When he sees Abdullah coming back, Umar anhu says, sit me up and says to Abdullah, what are you coming back with? He said, I'm coming back to you with news that is pleasing to you. He said, Alhamdulillah, that was the only thing that I wanted. But he said, after I die, go back to her again, just in case she felt under pressure and ask her after I die, if she's sure that she wants to give up that place and don't pressure her. If she says no, maybe after, you know, if she's calmed down from the emotion, bury me amongst the Muslims in the Baqir, I'm satisfied with that. And Abdullah ibn Umar then puts the head of Umar in his lap. At that moment, people are coming in and some of the Sahaba are praising Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu says to some of those that praise him, he said, Atashhadu li yawm al-qiyamah bidhalik? Will you bear witness on the day of judgment with what you're saying? And they're saying, yes, O Amir al-Mu'mineen. No one was dissatisfied with your khilafah. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu comes in. And Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu starts to mention all of these virtues. And Umar radiallahu anhu, he says, but what about all of these people? He said, I'm afraid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asking me about this ummah. And he said, if I could meet Allah and give everything of this world and not be punished or not be rewarded, then I would be satisfied. I just don't want to be punished for all of these people that were under my care. And then subhanAllah, he does something very interesting in his last moments. He says to Abdullah, oh my son, put my head in the dirt so that when Allah looks at me, he'll have mercy on me. He'll see his humble servant and show mercy to him. Abdullah says, I don't want to do it. No, why? And Umar radiallahu anhu said, if this face is a face that belongs in hellfire, then you don't want it in your lap. 
And if this face is a face that belongs in Jannah, then the pillow of Jannah is softer than your thigh. So just listen to me, my son. Put my face in the dirt. SubhanAllah, this man who spread Islam to most parts of the world that you all are from today, who is a person who the Prophet ﷺ praised over and over and over again, who has the shahada of the Sahaba, the witness of the companions, who died praying Fajr in Medina in sujood. A companion of the Prophet ﷺ guaranteed paradise and he's saying to his son, leave my head in the dirt. Uthman radiallahu anhu entered in and Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu with his face in the dirt, with his face on the ground. And he said, woe to Umar if Allah does not show mercy to him. Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took his soul in that humble place. This is Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. This is the fear of Allah that he had from the moment that he became Muslim to the moment that he left this earth in the best way that any person could possibly want to leave this earth. This is a man who one day set out to kill the Prophet ﷺ and ended up being buried next to the Prophet ﷺ. The way that they're buried, the Prophet ﷺ is buried, Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu is buried with his head to the shoulder of the Prophet ﷺ and Umar radiallahu anhu is buried with his head to the shoulder of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. SubhanAllah, you think about the people rising from their graves on the Day of Judgment. And I want you to imagine the scene when the Prophet ﷺ and Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu anhuma rise from those graves and proceed to Ard al-Mahshar, to the place of assembly. And the Prophet ﷺ entering into Jannah, as he said with Abu Bakr and Umar, 